Hello, everyone. My name is Cheng Su. Today, we would like to talk about Spark SQL join improvement at Facebook. More specifically, we will focus on several join improvements we did internally when running Spark platform at Facebook. Before we start the talk, just a brief introduction about myself. I'm a software engineer working at data platform team at Facebook. I'm a Spark contributor, mostly focusing on Spark SQL. Previously, I work on Hive and Hadoop team at Facebook. Here's the agenda for this talk. We will first start off with a brief overview of Spark SQL joins, and then talk about our improvement around shuffle hash join. After that, we will take a brief discussion for ongoing work to leverage Bloom filter for join. Then we will discuss the improvement around stream stream join. And finally, conclude by showing some of the problems that we are working on in this, in this space. Let's take a brief overview for Spark SQL joins. What are they, how they work, and when to use? Spark SQL has three different join operators, broadcast hash join, shuffle hash join, and summer join. Let's go over them one by one. As an example, we want to join to data source A and B. Broadcast has join is to join a super small table with another table. Suppose data source A is pretty small. Spark driver will build the hash relation on top of source A and broadcast A to every task. Each task will read a portion of table B and do hash table lookup join with table A. The requirement for broadcast hash join is the data size of one table should be smaller than the config Spark SQL auto broadcast join threshold, which is 10 megabytes by default. The pros of broadcast hash join is there's no shuffle and sort needed on both sides. And it, does, it doesn't have any skill issue. The cons is that if source A is not small enough, it can cause auto memory own on driver side when building the hash relation. Next is sort merge join. It first shuffles both sides A and B on join key. And after shuffle, each task will do a local sort on both sides. Then a join is performed in a sort merge way. The process of sort merge join is it doesn't have any own issues and it can handle large data sets well on both sides. So if you have a two large tables to join, summer join is bad choice. The cons is that it needs shuffle and sort before the join, and this can be inefficient and costly for large table. For example, the external sort can be expensive if the table is big and need to spill out of memory. In addition, if join keys are skilled, for example, has a lot of nouns as join key, summer join can have data skill problem. The third one is shuffle hash join. It first shuffles both sides A and B on join key. And after shuffle, each task will build hash table on smaller side and stream the other side to perform hash table lookup join similar to broadcast hash join. One thing to note is that join is disabled by default where Spark SQL join prefers summer join config. And one side should be smaller than Spark SQL auto broadcast join threshold times the Spark SQL shuffle partitions, which is around the two gigabytes by default. And the smaller size should be three x smaller than the larger size. The pros of shuffle hash join is that it can handle large data sets well on one side. It does not need sort compared to sort merge join. And in some cases, shuffle hash join is more efficient than sort merge join. The cons is that it needs shuffle before join, and it has similar skill problem as Osmer join. In addition, shuffle hash join has a unique challenge that it can own on task side for building hash table. And we will talk about more how we tackle this problem shortly. Here, hope everyone gets an idea for Spark SQL joins. Here we talk about the improvement we did around the shuffle hash join. The first one is to end cogen support for shuffle hard join. The motivation is to improve CPU compute resource saving by leveraging 
Spark SQL host day code gen. Previously, only broadcast has joined and the summer join has code gen support. Here, we add the code gen support for shovel high join as well. How do we do that? For implementation, we refactor broadcast has joined code gen logic into common parent class has joined dot Scala. As broadcast has joined and the shuffle has joined, has similar logic to do high table lookup join. For benchmark query, we are seeing 30% of runtime improvement compared to non code gen code paths. And the PR is merged into upstream and will be available in Spark 3.1. The second one is to add full auto join support. The motivation is to improve CPU and IO. Previously, only software join supports for auto join. And salt can be very expensive when table is large and need to spill to disk. Shuffle join, on the other hand, does not need salt. And here is how we do that. For auto join, not only need to output all the match row from both sides, but also need to output all non-matched rows. And for stream side, this is a trivial problem. As for each row when building hash table lookup, we know exactly whether the row is matched or not immediately. But it's non-trivial for build side. For each row in hash table build side, we only know whether the row has a match or not after exhausting every row from the other stream side. So we need actual data structure to record this information for build side. And here we use hash set to record the rows has been matched or not. Here is a figure for how full auto shuffle drawing works. First, we do shuffle on drawing keys on both sides. Then we build hash table on smaller side for each task. When drawing each rows from stream side, we maintain a separate hash set data structure to record match rows from build side. After reading all rows from stream side, we go over all rows from hash table again and output the not matched rows. For benchmark query, we are seeing 30% of runtime improvement compared to full auto summer join. And the PR is merged into upstream and will be available in SPA 3.1. The third one is to add salt based fallback mechanism for sharp hard join. The major pinpoint for sharp hard join is the ohm on task side when building the hash table. There's no fallback and no spill logic for the hash table right now for the sharp hard join. Once there's no enough memory for building the table, the task will be filled immediately and the query will be filled immediately in hard way. So given this ohm limitation, sharp hard join is hard to enable by default. And how we can tackle this problem? Here we introduce fallback logic when building hash table. Whenever we fail to get memory to insert current row to hash table, we stop here and sort both streams and build site and do the sort merge join instead of sharp hard join. The fallback is dynamic during runtime without any config tuning. And we enable this feature by default at Facebook for three, several years. We don't see ohm problem for shuffle joint after ending this fallback feature. And the PR is working in progress and hopefully it can be available in Spark 3.1. Okay, here we go to next topic to leverage Bloom filter for join operators. Bloom filter is a data structure to test the the membership. For a given element, it answers the question whether it's in a set of elements or not. The motivation is to use Bloom filter to filter out the rows as early as possible to save CPU and IO resource for shuffle high join and summer join. First, the Bloom filter will be built on join keys of smaller size. Then the Bloom filter will be broadcasted to every task when scanning the larger side. In this way, it reduces the amount of data to process in followed shuffle and sort state. The design is under discussion with several community members and we will submit Jira with design later on.
The last topic we want to discuss is the stream stream join improvement we work on in Spark Structure Streaming. Here is a quick refreshment for stream stream join. There's one join operator for stream stream join, which is called streaming symmetric hash join exec. And here is how it works as an illustration. For structured streaming macro batch execution mode, in each macro batch, the source A and B are shuffled on join keys. And each macro batch will join with the state store on the other side where a hash table lookup join mechanism. The state store basically contains rows from previous batches on the other side. After the join is done, the current macro batch of data will be stored into each C store. And this is for next macro batch to join. Normally, the watermark in stream stream join is used in SQL query to remove the stale rows from C store to avoid C store growing infinitely. And our first work is to end the left semi join support into stream stream join. And the motivation is we found actually for some FB streaming workload, left semi join is even more popular than left auto join. And here's an example. We have a, suppose we have a stream of data of as impression and as impression you can think of is as showing to the user and another stream of data of as click, which means that has a click from the user. And we want to get all the as impression, which has as clicks from the user, but we do not care what those clicks are. So we only need to get the as impression has a match clicks. And this is exactly left semi join semantics. And if we do it with left auto join, it will be very verbose as we output all the as impression rows. And how, how we do the left semi join here? Okay, for left side input row for each row, we check if there's a match on right side state store. And if there's a match, we output the, the left side row immediately because there's a match. This is for the left semi join semantics. And, but we do not need to put the, the left side row, the match row into left side state store because there's no need to put the in state store anyway. If there's no match and we do not output anything, but put the row into left state store. And uh, when put this into left state store, we mark the match field to set to false in state store. In the same, same way for right side input row, we check if there's a match on left side state store. For all match left rows in state store, we all put the rows with match field as false. So this means we only output the left side rows match for the first time to guarantee left semi join semantics. And after that, we set all the left rows with match field to be true. And it will not be joined and output again. The state store eviction logic is to evict rows from both left and right side state store below the watermark. There's no customer logic around that. It's exactly the same as inner join watermark logic. And the PR is merged into upstream already and will be available in Spark 3.1. The second one is to end for auto join support. Stream stream join already supports left auto and right auto join. And uh, for auto join, it's kind of trivial to end uh, in this case, because which is basically a combination between left auto and right auto join. And how can we achieve that? For left side input row, we check if there's a match on right side C stop. And if there's a match, we output all the match rows immediately and put the row in the left side state store. For the right side input row, we check if there's a match on left side state store. 
And if there's a match, output all match rows and update left side row state with match field to set to true. And we also put the, all the rows in this batch into right side state store. For left side rows need to be evicted from state store, we only output rows if it's a non match rows because all the match rows has, has been output already. And this is the same uh, state store eviction logic for right side. The PR is working in progress and hopefully it can be available in Spark 3.1. And to recap, in this session, we discuss three major points. First, we go over Spark SQL join implementations. Then we talk about the shuffle join improvement we did internally. And we briefly discuss to leverage the Bloom filter for the shuffle join and summer join. At the end, we discuss some of the improvement we are working on for the stream stream join in structured streaming contest. For future work in this area, we are working on his history-based optimization to select best drawing strategy at the runtime. One observation in today's data warehouse is normally data engineer and software engineer run data pipelines and run them every day, daily. So mostly of the SQL queries are repeated every day, just with different input partitions every day. So with this observation, we can see like predict today's query runtime metrics with historical query runtime metrics, such as drawing data sets. And with drawing data sets, we can decide which drawing to use. And that's all. And this concludes my talk. Feel free to ask any questions and your feedback is very important to us. Thank you.